Welcome back to Reimagine 2020. I'm Yona Hockhauser, and I'm glad today to be joined by Patrick Collins, software engineer and developer advocate at Chainlink Labs. Patrick, thanks so much for joining us. Yona, thank you so much for having me. Really excited to be here. Now, first of all, for those who don't know you, you want to give us a little background about kind of who you are and how you got into blockchain? Yeah, um, so that's a good question. So I actually, um, so I worked at a hedge fund for a couple of years. And so I was, I was in the fintech space, right? I was in the fintech space and data obviously is, is really, really important in fintech because, you know, you need data to run your models. You need data to pretty much do anything, especially at like a quant firm where I was. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up moving to um, a data vendor um, and uh, we sold data and we, I ended up getting a call um, from, from not anybody from Chainlink, but from some people who were building off of Chainlink and they were asking, Hey, you know, we'd love to, you know, host your data on chain. Um, you know, here's what, here's what we can do. We're using this technology called Chainlink. And so mm -hmm. Chainlink was actually my introduction to the blockchain, which is interesting. Yeah. I'd, I'd written like a couple of like trading bots before, uh, but nothing other than like, okay, they're, they're another asset, right? That was mm -hmm. in my mind, blockchain was just another asset. So these guys call me and in my mind, I'm like, okay, cool. Like these guys are asking, uh, these guys are telling me they'll give us free money if we, if we <laughs> say, sure, we'll sign up. So I was like, okay, this is probably a scam. Um, they're blockchain related. And I, I ended up doing a ton of research and digging around. And I, you know, the more I looked into it and I started learning about like smart contracts and, and how blockchain technology is this next evolution, I started getting more and more excited um and that's that's basically how i got into it and then i started writing my own smart contracts and i was like started realizing holy wow this is really like this next phase and um i ended up getting connected with the, the chain link team learning about oracles and uh, you know i was blown away by how fantastic the plan was and how fantastic the technology was and the implications it actually can have um, so that's how, I, and that's how I got into it. And I've basically, you know, I've basically been like, okay, like this is awesome. I'm so excited. And I've been like that ever since. And to me, it's, it's cool because, um, like in, in FinTech, there's a lot of, you know, really cool stuff that you can do, but I feel like with blockchain, it's, it's almost like FinTech, but like times a thousand, like there's, you can do all the FinTech stuff, but also way more. So mm -hmm. that's been really exciting for me. That's basically how I got into it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you know, before we hop into you know, blockchain and, and oracles, uh, what does it mean to be a developer advocate? Are you, are you fighting for you know, better lunch plans for developers? What, what does that exactly mean? You know? <laughs> yes, we all need better lunch plans. That's exactly what I'm fighting <laughs> for. Um, no, so developer advocate, basically my role is to help engineers be successful in any way that I can. So, um, so yeah, so my role is basically anybody who comes, comes to the, the chain the community, uh, I, I help them get spun up. So, and we're actually having a hackathon right now, um, hackdoctorchain.link, if anybody wants to check it out, depending on when this gets uh, released. Uh, we're having a Chainlink hackathon now and, and you'll see me in there. People are asking questions. Um, so I'm very technical. Hey, how do I do this? And, and I, I help them be successful, you know, whether it's, you know, help helping with questions. Um, I make a lot of content on our YouTube. I write blogs. Um, sometimes I do like a little bit of, um, uh, uh, like build a project and, and kind of show that out. So, uh, so it, it's kind of all over the place. My role is mm -hmm. to do whatever I can to help engineers be successful. So that's what it means by developer advocacy. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, now I know I learned, learned something new today, uh, but, but something else I'm sure, I'm sure now that we're going to we're gonna hop into Oracle's now, I'm definitely going to learn something new. Uh, but uh, you know, Oracle's eventually uh, essentially, and I'll let you expound upon this, of course, because you know, you, you definitely know more uh, here, but, you know, blockchain uh, is a great solution to an issue of how do we, how do we create a system or, or, or uh, uh, deal with a network where there's uh, two parties or many parties uh, that we want to ensure a trustless uh, system between them, uh, where we make sure that any data that's on the blockchain, uh, everyone can agree there has to be consensus. Uh, but there's an issue uh, to blockchain where uh, historically it's had a problem making sure that the inputs into the blockchain, uh, data that's coming from outside the blockchain, they want to integrate into the blockchain. Uh, and that's where Oracle's come in. So do you want to uh, explain a little bit about uh, how Chainlink works? Yeah, and, and just to even go a little bit deeper on what you're, you're getting at here, you're getting at what, what we refer to as the smart contract problem or the connectivity problem. Um, smart contracts, you know, like we said, they're these fantastic 
tool, there's, it's this fantastic solution where we can have these trustless agreements. Um, but the issue is that blockchains are deterministic systems, right? So we can't have a blockchain as part of its like consensus, as part of this verification process, you know, make an API call, right? Because if one node makes an API call and then, you know, sends the transaction to all the other nodes, another node makes that API call, even an instant later, it's, it's not gonna be able to validate it. Right. Mm -hmm. Or even worse, you know, if you spin, spun up your own new node, you would go to validate all the transactions up to that point. You're never going to get everything to be the same because any API could be, you know, uh, broken, deteriorated, not updated, you know, whatever. Right. So you can't have APIs as part of the consensus protocol in a blockchain because because of determinism. Now, this is a huge limiting factor because we want and we need this external data to do any of the interesting stuff. Right. You, you can't have. Um, you can't have like an insurance smart contract, for example, this is one of my favorite examples, actually. You can't have an insurance smart contract uh, without getting data about the real world, whether it's, you know, farmers or crop insurance, for example, you know, hey, like pay me out insurance if the weather's terrible. Well, you're going to need weather data in order to execute based off of that. Um, so, so this is kind of like the, the roundabout way of, of answering a question here is oracles are anything that connects these deterministic blockchains uh, to the real world. So oracles really are solving this connectivity issue and getting the reliable data on chain so that we can do these more interesting agreements, right? Because that's what smart contracts are. They're, they're this next evolution of agreements. They're the superior form, this digital agreement. So oracles allow you to bring uh, data on chain. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, there, there are a, a number of oracles in the ecosystem. What makes Chainlink different uh, th than all the others? Yeah, so so Chainlink, there's there's a lot of things. So Chainlink is number one. It's this modular modular framework for building decentralized Oracle networks, right? And so that's really really important. That's going to be a key piece, right? Because if you you can have a centralized Oracle, um, but the issue is now your smart contract relies on this piece. Right? It relies on this piece of centrality here, right? So um, the purpose of smart contracts is to have, you know, trustless decentralized agreements. Now, if you have a decentralized agreement, but it still relies on somebody, now it's kind of not any better than just having a regular agreement, right? Because we mm -hmm. still are depending on, you know, if that person, is, or person or entity is going to be honest with us, right? And that's the issue we see with regular contracts, right? Like, for example, let's do the crop insurance one. Again, the insurance provider is almost incentivized to kind of like find the loophole, right? To find the loophole, because they, because otherwise they have to pay out. So, you know, we're not saying that, um, we're not saying like, oh, like all insurance people are bad. And, you know, there, there's tons of, and the majority of them from what we've seen are, are really good, but the issue is still, um, they're incentivized to not pay out, right? Whereas versus a smart contract, there's no incentive because the smart contract just does whatever, whatever we're told, right? So, so Chainlink is this framework uh, for building these decentralized oracles where you can get this reliable decentralized data. Um, and so that's one of the biggest pieces. Um, there, another huge piece is that Chainlink right now is already securing billions of dollars in DeFi. So if you go over to DeFi Pulse, you check out a whole bunch um, uh, of those projects that are going on. A lot of them are using Chainlink, you know, like Aave, Synthetics, um, Yearn.Finance. Finance. Uh, and the reason is because it, it's this it's this powerful decentralized network of data and a lot of them are using it to get pricing data for example like what's the price of of uh, of ethereum in usd what's the price of bitcoin and getting all this off-chain data um and using it to secure these these billions of dollars so um so there's a whole there's a lot of reasons why Chainlink is this this fantastic oracle system and then actually didn't i didn't go into how it works i i i realized that you did ask that and i didn't really go into it would you like me to go into that too or yeah you could get you know you could give a, a, a you know a basic overview for someone who's not you know the most tech savvy yeah. just give us the uh, the 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 essential idea yeah, and then I can, and then that'll actually even shed more light on, on why Chainlink is so fantastic. So, so the way that it works, again, because blockchains are deterministic, the way that works is you have to put data on chain through an external transaction of some kind, right? Um, so that's essentially what Chainlink does. So a, a smart contract um, will make, will basically make a request by emitting some type of log that'll say, hey, I'm looking for data from Chainlink X or excuse me, from node X, and I'm looking for data Y. 
And the nodes are actually watching these chains, depending on you know, how they're set up. Um, they can watch multiple chains, and I'll get into that in a second too. Um, it'll watch the chains, it'll look for these events, and when it sees one, it goes, okay, cool, let me go get that data for you, and it does it off chain, grabs the data, and then it posts it back on in, in an external transaction, right? So it makes a transaction with this data, uh, and then it posts it on chain. Now that's, uh, again, how we can keep consensus because now we have it in a transaction as opposed to you know, being part of the consensus. Now, um, uh, the next phase of that is when these smart contracts make these requests, they make it to a, a decentralized network of independent node operators. Uh, and this is another piece that, that's fantastic about Chainlink is that you can choose your network and you can see the reputation of nodes. Like, okay, the node, you know, node X responded with this type of data. Node X gives a really good answer. Node Y, and you can mm -hmm. choose your your network depending on the on the relation. So it's even more module uh, in that regard. So your smart contract makes these requests to several nodes. The nodes respond and and post it on chain. And there's there's two there's two other pieces there um, uh, from just that explanation that kind of go into you know why Chainlink is this fantastic oracle system. You have not only do you, does Chainlink you know, allow for this secure, reliable, decentralized data, but it also builds this almost brand new ecosystem surrounded on uh, uh, data delivery. So Chainlink nodes are delivering data to the blockchain and it almost creates this, this new ecosystem of, you know, okay, cool, there's, there's all these nodes, you know, which ones are the best and uh, who, who do we want to choose from? And it, it really is, it really gives the power to the engineers and it really gives the power to the Chainlink node operators um, to be the best that they can. And it's, it's this fantastic technology kind of similar to, I, I think of Chainlink a lot like um, similar to, to Python in that regard, because anybody can use it. Anybody can spin up a node, anybody can, can get involved. There's, there's, no, there's really no centrality to it. It's, hey, here's the technology, have fun, have a blast, right? And um, I, 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 you should probably cut me off at some point because otherwise I'll just yeah. keep going. Well, uh, well, so I, I, so I, I do have a question on one point you made. Uh, where, where you kind of so, said that the, the, so, the people so, could the, choose their own. Go ahead. So, so before you ask that question, I just wanted to, to jump one more thing in before I, before it's yeah. this one, and, and then I Go promise ahead. that you can cut me off. So um, the other thing that is is one of Chainlink's you know biggest strengths is that it's blockchain agnostic. So Chainlink is for getting data onto any blockchain. And um, a lot of the engineers who are building the core features have done a lot of work to make sure that um, pretty much everything about Chainlink is customizable for any blockchain, which is really exciting. So be it Ethereum, um, you know, Avalanche, Polkadot, Tezos, um, it's blockchain agnostic, which is a, a huge, 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 powerful, um, powerful feature of Chainlink. So I, I will pause now, otherwise I'll, I'll keep going, but yes, please. <laughs> no, I love you're, you're, you're feeding me really wonderful information uh, and I'm sure our viewers appreciate it. Uh, but I do have a question on one of the points you made where you said that, you know, uh, an entity could choose their own independent uh, uh, node operators. Um, it, d do both parties have to agree on those uh, operators? And, and if not, uh, you know, what's stopping someone does it, what's stopping someone from choosing the node operators that they feel will, you know, in general provide more the information that helps them more than the other side. Yeah. So, so that's a really good question. Um, so, I mean, when, when building a smart contract, um, you know, like, yes, like before, before the second party agrees, like they're going to look at it, they're going to look it over as well. Um, so yes. Um, there's also, um, this kind of goes into a, to another feature of Chainlink. Um, which is why it's good that you cut me off, otherwise I can keep rattling off, um, uh, in this concept called price feeds. So these are these um, decentralized, almost pre-boxed network, right? If you don't want to have to, you know, figure out what your network is and you just say, hey, let's just use this, let's just use the pre-boxed network and we'll, and we'll pull from the price feeds. Um, and that's also, the price feeds are also really, really good and really robust because um, it's just a view function on chain. Um, these are these are actually the, the price feeds are the tool that a lot of these these top products are, are currently using in DeFi. Um, so if you don't want to come up with your own network, you can absolutely just use price feeds. But to answer your um, your, your original question, yes, both parties would would want to look at the nodes and be like, okay, like is is there something here that's that's weird, that's fishy, that's going on? So so when you're designing the the node, uh, excuse me, the smart contract, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm.
And, and you know, you, you mentioned that there, there are you know tons of big projects that are, that are utilizing uh, Chainlink Oracles right now. Uh, which project would you say it uses Chainlink Oracles the most? You know, where's where's the majority? Uh, you know, of tra uh, of uh, I, I, is it transactions? Is it data requests? I don't know what the word would be. Uh, where's that coming from? Yeah, I, I think data requests would probably be the, yeah. the correct answer. Um, I I actually have no idea who uses it I, the most. I, I would mm -hmm. I would be very curious to, to find out. <laughs> the the beauty is that it's open. It's, it's it is a blockchain, so that yeah. information is out there and available. Yeah. Anyone anyone can look it up. All you viewers at home, if you're interested, go look it up. The beauty yeah, and of the let, blockchain. And let me know because I'd be curious to yeah. see like who's using the most. Okay. Well, maybe you know th this is also information you can find, but maybe if, if you know this, you know besides you know, the, the, the known DeFi projects that, that are clearly are, you know, creating uh, this major use, use case for it. Uh, what other types of projects would use uh, oracles? Yeah, so literally, <laughs> literally any type of smart contract that wants to use external data, right? Any type of smart contract that wants a decentralized um, contract to do something you know, that's who's going to use it. And even those who don't, who want to, who want a centralized one. So I actually, I'm, I'm doing a, um, a demo next week with uh, Kaleido. Uh, they build up their own, uh, their, their framework to build their own private blockchains. And they're also using Chainlink because, you know, the same reason, you know, they know they don't, um, they know that they're a, they're a private blockchain, but they know that the Chainlink infrastructure is so solid that, you know, that they're using it for centralized Oracle. So if you want a centralized Oracle, you can absolutely do it. Uh, I kind of focus more on the decentralized part, uh, but any any project. I, I mean, I, I mentioned insurance. Um, gaming is one. Gaming is actually huge, and, and we're seeing more and more adoption there. Um, Chainlink also has, has a tool for that, for gaming. Um, it's called the Chainlink VRF, Chainlink Verifiably Random Functions, uh, which allow people to get provably random numbers in their smart mm -hmm. contracts, in their, in their dApps, which is this is kind of like insane, like, <laughs> magic to me almost like how do you get a, a random number but prove that it's random to me that's like what, what but um could, could couldn't you get the same random number just by coding in a uh, random number uh, a random uh, num number generator into a smart contract and everyone could look at the code and, and make sure it truly is random so this is this is a good question actually um so in a deterministic system and, and this is even true with uh with like regular coding languages um mm -hmm random numbers are really only pseudo random, right? Because they, mm -hmm. they have to get the number from something, especially right. with a deterministic system like blockchain. Usually the way that people previously have been getting random numbers is just, you know, using the block hash, right? Get a random yeah. number from that, yeah. um, which is good. But the, the hash itself is, is truly random. So it's, it's another pseudo random. And the reason uh -huh, for this uh -huh. is, uh, when a miner creates the block, right, and creates a block hash, they can choose whether or not they want to publish it, right? Mm -hmm. So when they create a block, let's say, um, let's say a miner is, is, uh, is in a lottery, right, for like a million dollars, if they're the one that figures out the answer to, you know, figures the block hash out first, and they realize if they publish it, they're going to lose, they ah, just don't publish okay. it. And so this creates this super unfair, um, unfair lottery now. Now you have like this, this smart contract that's based off this random number. And, you know, it just, it, it seems very small, but it, mm -hmm. it just, just, it's now no longer fair. Wow. So the, the Chainlink VRF allows you to actually have provably uh, verified random numbers, which is fantastic, you know, for, for any gaming application uh, mm -hmm. or any lottery, or we've seen like random ticketing numbers um or nfts there's there's a there's a ton of, of places in there so um yeah so insurance gaming you know tokenized assets DeFi. um on again the list kind of goes on and on but it's yeah. it's anything any smart contract that wants to get reliable off-chain data you know that's really fascinating uh issue and solution that, that i never even heard about this idea and i'm i'm assuming most people who you know aren't coders or don't really understand you know, the nature of deterministic systems, uh, probably they, this problem would never even come to their head. So kudos to you guys for, for recognizing the problem and coming up with a solution. Uh, that's awesome. And, and so, you know, here, like you mentioned, there, there's so many options for, for what it can do and, and, and who could use it. But uh, my question is not, not necessarily on Chainlink, but Oracles in general, what are its limits? Uh, you know, could we essentially input any data from the real, from the external world? I mean, what if the data is not uh, quantifiable, 
you know, instead of it being, uh, you know, today's weather is 56 degrees, but what if the answer is uh, yellow or sad, you know, or, or something that is harder to actually put into a, a data form? Is, is that a limit that oracles could overcome? Yeah, so, so this, this question is almost just for, you know, for, for Web2. Uh, mm -hmm. This is like a Web2 problem too, right? How do we get this unquantifiable data? Um, that's something that's, I mean, the answer to that in, in Web2 and, and off the blockchain is going to be the same with oracles, right? Mm -hmm. If you can't quantify, it's going to be hard to put it in a smart contract because, you know, smart contracts are these quantifiable, these deterministic mm -hmm. systems. So, um, so if, if the question is like, hey, can oracles like, put in, um, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. Can oracles put in this qu qualitative as opposed to quantitative data? I mean, the answer is gonna be the same as, I'm, I'm just gonna go back to FinTech for an example here. You know, when, when you're building a, a FinTech model uh, or, or for algorithmic trading, you know, can you add this qualitative data? Well, normally what you do is, is you find a way to turn that qualitative, da qualitative data into quantitative data, right? So for example, like, let's say like, oh, I think, uh, I want to build a, a trading um, a trading model on whether or not Apple is a good stock. Well, maybe I'll use analyst estimates and I'll aggregate them. And, you know, based off the sentiment, I'll, I'll give them like mm -hmm. a sentiment score. So you can convert those qualitative numbers to quantitative, and then you can use those to power the smart contracts, right? Because um, in the smart contracts, you, you're going to want to put, you know, hey, if sentiment is four, do what do x if sentiment is five do y if sentiment is six do you know so so the answer is going to be the same uh between oracles and in, in web two mm -hmm. and and i think that you're kind of the you know a, a unique person in this sphere to to give insight into this question uh you know often in in blockchain and crypto we look for solutions to get away from the traditional system uh to, to provide new solutions and, and new products uh that, that are unavailable or, or that we just don't like the way it's being done in the traditional system but before you came into, into blockchain, you were, you were a quanta uh, trader, algo trader. Um, is there anything from the blockchain and from oracles and, and price feeds, decentralized price feeds, is there anything that, 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 uh, that traditional uh, algorithmic trader, quant uh, 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 funds that they would want to use from this technology? Yeah, and, uh, and just, to, just so that we're, we're clear, I, was, I, was on the, I, wasn't, do, I wasn't a trader myself. Uh, I was on the I was on the infrastructure side. I was investment analyst and and uh, software engineer. So just so that that's that's straight there too. But um, yes, uh, the answer is yes. And actually, as part of the hackathon, we're starting to get more and more questions saying, "Hey, these these price feeds, these decentralized feeds on chain, they seem like they're a really reliable data source that I would really like to use for my models. How do I get the historical data there?" Um, and because blockchain, you know, it is, is the way that it is, you can see every transaction, every state change that it's ever made. So you can actually query the blockchain and find, you know, all this data. So, um, so to answer your question, yes. And, and, and that's going to be a, another long list of answers there that the easy yeah. one is, is right now that these chain link price feeds, you know, going back, find the historical data, but just any data in general, right? If you're, if you're a quant trader, if you're an algo trader and you're looking to build a model, you can use the blockchain to query and find, okay, like maybe, I, maybe you want to build a model on, um, on how many times, you know, Apple is written in a smart contract. Now it's probably going to be very low right now, um, but maybe something in the future, but something that might be very high right now is maybe you want to build a model based off the, you know, the volume of, uh, of, I'm going to use uni token the volume of uni token right. which came out recently um you can query all that on chain you can find that on chain so and any other data that gets ported on chain too you can query you can find so data is this incredibly incredibly important piece for any model for any algorithmic trader and it's going to be like one of these big central pieces i mean researchers spend so much time finding good data finding quality data cleaning it you know, mapping it and doing all this stuff before they can even, you know, start doing the interesting things, right? They, they have to spend so much time. So uh, having it already available in this immutable state, you know, it's not going to get broken. You know, it's not going anywhere uh, is this really, really powerful piece um, for that world. So absolutely is the answer there. And I, we're, we're starting to see more and more traffic people saying, Hey, how do I get the, uh, how do I get the historic prices of, of these, uh, these chain link price feeds now? So yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and still this technology is so new and so young. 
Um, and, and there's so much a tremendous innovation happening here. So my, my question is, how does new, um, new data uh, enter, enter the, the, you know, the, the chain network? Is, is it from the node side or the query side? And I'll explain what I mean. Uh, let's say, um, uh, um, let's say a, a protocol or a blockchain wants, wants to query for data. Um, and it, it's data that, that, ha that isn't yet ever been queried before. You know, for, no one's ever asked, I don't know, the temperature in Tel Aviv. I'm just giving an example. Do when they query that, does the, the network, the nodes then see, ooh, we never actually set this up. Now we will go uh, start, uh, make a new integration for this. Or does the, the network, you know, always looking for new data they think would be queried and those, they set up that API, they set up that, that link, and then next time it's queried, they have the answer to that. You know, it's, it's funny you ask this, actually. I asked the same question two years ago at a Boston FinTech convention, but the question was for um, data vendors to, uh -huh. to model. So it's interesting because the, the question is pretty much the same. Where, who, who decides what data is going to go on the blockchain? And it's kind of this like chicken or the egg type thing. Um, it, it can really go both ways, right? You know, the, you can have these customer led systems, right? Where it's somebody shows up, hey, I really need Tel Aviv weather data, right? And then, you know, nodes will spin it up and say, okay, cool, here we have this data. But um, we've also seen it in, in the data vendor world as well, you know, off the blockchain where a data vendor will, will find some piece of data, they'll package it and they'll say, hey, we have this new data. Here's some of the insights that you can take from it, right? And then it's onto the customer to decide whether or not they want it. So. Um, I think it, that's a fantastic question. Like who kind of decides what's data? And, and I think it's, it's really goes either way. Um, it can be the, the data vendor. It, and in this case, the chain link nodes who decide, Hey, we have this integration with, you know, data. Y um, it's available now. We would love to see people use it or it can come from the customers. I think that that's a really interesting question. Uh, I think it's going to come from both places. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. That, that, that does, I do like that. It has the flexibility or the versatility uh, I think that that is obviously the better solution if it could come from both sides instead of instead of limiting it. Um, a recent announcement of Matic integrating uh, Chainlink, um, you know, and it seems like there's always every day new integrations. Uh, are there other layer two solutions that 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 are also planning on on, on soon integrating Chainlink as well? Yeah, um, and I, I know there's been a lot of those too. Actually, I, I haven't been working so much with the on the layer two side, so mm -hmm. um, my knowledge there might be a little bit rusty. But one that I, I think is really interesting uh, is Arbitrum, um, which I, I, I think I haven't played with it, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, but doing a lot of this this off chain computation with Arbitrum is really really exciting. Um, I'm trying to think of other like layer twos. I, I wish I had my list in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, well, you, you, you mostly, you're mostly dealing with the layer one. I'm, I'm mostly dealing with like the layer one stuff. Yeah. Um, let me, let me see. So then, so then I'll, I could, I, I could, I can, you know, definitely ask about that. You know, is, sure. is the team researching or, or, or even already implementing a layer one scaling solution like the ZK Snarks? So, um, so we actually are, so you're talking about like loop rings, uh, loop ring stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I, I don't understand what, what do you mean? What's the question? Like, no, like, like. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you can tell me like Chainlink's ability to scale. I mean, we see this with, with uh, various blockchains where, um, you know, they, they become so successful, so popular. Look at Ethereum, you know, with the gas fees. It, it was such a good or delivered, uh, the, you know, the, 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 to exactly the needs of the, pro, of the dApps and the, uh, that were built upon it that it kind of couldn't scale. I mean, it became congested. Uh, is that a fear with Chainlink? How, how scalable is Chainlink? And, and what kind of solutions are you, do you guys use in order to enable that scalability? Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, I understand the question now. And then on the layer two stuff, yeah, like I said, it's just because I haven't been working with them so much, but there's definitely a list out there. You want to check out like Chainlink resources or go anywhere on Twitter. Um, yeah. there, somebody will point you in the right direction to show you like <laughs> sure. a list. And it's, it's yeah. definitely a massive list. And I'm, I'm a little bit sheepish that I, I, I can't just like rattle off 50 right now. Um, but yeah, definitely go check that out. But as far as, as scaling goes, right? Um, again, like Chainlink is, is this modular system, right? So whereas Ethereum, you get a, a ton of transactions, you get a lot of congestion, it's going to slow down the network and it's going to cause these super high gas fees that we're seeing right now, right? Uh, with Chainlink, um, the more you, uh, the more people want data, the more people want oracles, um, it's, it's, 
it's unlimitedly scalable, right? Because then you just get new chain link nodes that show up, new independent node operators. You can have larger networks, right? You can have, uh, you can query data through multiple oracles and you can have this just this insanely large framework of, of customizability, right? Mm -hmm. So as Chainlink grows and as Chainlink goes, you know, more blockchain agnostic, I mean, most of the use right now is on Ethereum. Uh, we're mm -hmm. starting to see some other projects looking to pick them up on other blockchains as well. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the answer there is that you, you, you spin up more nodes, um, you have these larger networks, um, and so the, the core Chainlink team has kind of already thought about this and just mm -hmm. made it so that the framework is this really simple, cool, more people are using, great, we'll spin up some more, or not even will, just whoever wants to, we'll spin up some more nodes. If there's demand, if people want data, um, people are gonna come in and spin up a node. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, and it, it does seem like, like it does like every day there is a new Chainlink integration with with, with a different platform or protocol. Um, on the developer side, and you know, you are a developer advocate, and so I assume you know this here. But on the developer side, how easy is it to to integrate Chainlink uh, to a new uh, different protocol or to to a, a new project? Uh, to to a new project or to a new blockchain or both? Let's say a new blockchain protocol. Yeah. New blockchain. Okay, so uh, it's actually the steps are pretty easy. Um, Oh, well, I think they're pretty easy, but I'm also very, <laughs> very familiar. Yeah, the steps are pretty easy because really the, the chain framework has been designed again to be, you know, blockchain agnostic. So you need, you really need three things, right? You need an external initiator and an initiator is what's going to tell you, tell the chain link nodes to start getting data, right? So for example, for, um, for Ethereum, one of the easiest initiators is what's called a, a run log initiator. And if I'm going too technical, feel free to jump in. No, that's fine. It's called a, called a run log initiator. And this is that scanning for events on the blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. So basically you just, you know, you repurpose that initiator into what's, what's called an external initiator for another blockchain for whatever, you know, and to read its events or whatever the equivalent of events are, or if it doesn't have events, you know, whatever else, however else like other pieces read off of it. Um, and you define that you say, okay, cool. This event is going to trigger this node to start all the other pieces of the node stay exactly the same. You know, it does its thing. It gets the data, it adapts it and does whatever. Uh, and then the way it writes it back to chain in an external, um, transaction is going to be defined in, in what's called an external adapter. Uh, and this is going to be, you know, how do I make the transaction back on chain? So the adapter on, on Ethereum is just called the ETH transaction adapter, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what it does. It just needs to make an Ethereum transaction with that data. Um, but for whatever other blockchain, you just have that, that, um, that uh, external adapter for that blockchain. For example, um, like, like Polkadot, like Tezos, um, uh, like, uh, like Binance Smart Chain. There's all, uh, some of these have already been written. So if you don't want to build these, you can just go check it out. But if you're looking to integrate with a new chain, you can just get those two done um, to build it out. And then the third piece that you're going to need is, is a token bridge to keep the uh, economic of the system incentivized. You know, the, the node operators uh, need link in order to operate and to be secure. So those are the, those are the three pieces that you need, token bridge, external adapter, external initiator, and the, and I've, we've done uh, a number of videos and blogs and it's all in the docs um, for kind of getting these spun up and, and building these. So if you're looking to, to integrate with the new blockchain, definitely head on over there. And if you need help, uh, I mean, jump into the Discord, jump into the Telegram, Twitter, like whatever. Community is super active. Um, so feel free to ask questions. So that that's basically yeah. how. And, and that and that is you know we, we see that time and again uh, you know in, in the crypto sphere how the importance of a good community because that's essentially what what drives the development as well as the use. Um, now you, you did mention the link token um, and, and the token has done tremendously well. I mean I, it got up to the fourth largest market cap. I don't know where it sits right now, but but essentially what does the link token do in the Chainlink network? Yeah, so the link token, the, the main piece that the link token does is it secures the network, right? So, so node operators, um, they're, getting, they're getting paid for their services, right? So I, I like to think of it as, as Oracle gas, right? When you, when you make a transaction, you're paying a little bit of Ethereum gas. I'm, I'm using Ethereum as the yeah. example here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but on, on whatever blockchain, there's going to be some type of gas equivalent, right? Uh, it's going to be the same thing for Oracles. You know, they need to be... Um, 
uh, they need to be incentivized to to make these uh, transactions reliably to get this data reliably, right? So, so that's what the link token is doing. It, it secures the uh, the chain link network uh, from market volatility of, of some other asset, right? Unrelated to the network, and, and that's mm -hmm. what the link token is for. And in addition, there's some technical reasons, you know, at the protocol level, actually. Um, and again, I'm gonna uh, kind of sync it to Ethereum just because that's that's where a lot of the action is here. The, the typical ERC-20 doesn't allow for the transfer and execution of a smart contract in a single transaction, whereas mm -hmm. the ERC-677, which is what the Chainlink token is, it's an ERC-677, which is a backwards compatible um, ERC-20, if for those mm -hmm. of you who are familiar with those. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the ERC-677 uh, has this transfer and call a method where when a request is made, the payload of that request is actually sent along with the token transfer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is going to be like the payment to the node operators. And this will be so the node operators know that they're going to be paid for this request and respond immediately, knowing that they're going to actually be paid for their work. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's a really important and key piece um, for them to keep uh, responding honestly, because that's going to have, that's going to keep their incentives in check, right? When you're a node that's responding dishonestly, guess what? The blockchain doesn't forget. Blockchain's going to remember because it's yeah. immutable. So when you respond poorly, um, it's going to sit there. And again, just what we were talking about, anybody can choose their node, anybody can choose their network. So if you have a smart contract and you know, you're specifying, you know, Oracle X, you can look at Oracle X's entire history. Hey, I noticed that with Oracle X, they only respond 50% of the time. Mm -hmm. We're not going to use them because there's a good chance it's going to be a waste of our time. Um, so the link token, it really, it, it's, it's required at the protocol level. Um, it, it, and it's also even more important um, to kind of secure that the network of these node operators. Uh, and it's again, because the, the chain link, uh, ecosystem is multi-chain. It's chain link agnostic. There needs some to be some type of uh, utility to have them all uh, be on the same page with. So, so that's what the link token is for. And um, uh, and and I even went into like a little bit of the reputation and the economics, which is a is a really important piece too, because that's you know that's what's incentivizing these these nodes to get spun up, and that's what's um, incentivizing them to stay in check too. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you mentioned this this kind of reputation where the where the network you know uh, algorithmically starts uh, filtering out you know or not filtering out but but kind of ranking you know this is a more trustworthy this person's more right this person's more active. Um, do you think and, and right now it, it, it is being used for a tremendously uh, use case which is this Oracle system uh, uh, for 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 qualitative uh, sorry quantitative information, but c can you see this also um, being modified? Uh, to, to create a, a qualitative system. And what do I mean by that? Can, can you see a future where, I don't know, um, kind of a decentralized jury for court cases where, you know, where, 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 where you know, everyone kind of gives their decision on a court case and, and the system kind of learns who usually is right, who usually is wrong and, and kind of ranks them. And, and that's what I mean. Like it, a system where it, it isn't necessarily uh, uh, numbers. It's not, you're not, you're, they're not querying for data that everyone agrees on. They're, they're querying for, for data that everyone has a different opinion, but we want the majority opinion. We want consensus here. Um, and, and so whether that be for elections or, or, or kind of uh, court cases, uh, even opinion, even going so far as like integrating into a social uh, network, uh, a social media network where let's say, you know, I'm a girl or I'm a guy and, and I, I, I'm trying, I'm going to have my first date tonight and I have three different outfits. Okay. And I try on th each outfit and I, and I ask, I query the network, Hey, which outfit looks the best. Okay. And now everyone in the network is going to vote on which outworks, uh, outfits the best and, and the majority is going to win. And over time, the people with the better fashion sense, let's say would be ranked higher. Uh, do you foresee it? Could, could that be done? Uh, a, a kind of this type of system that I'm describing? Yeah. So there's, there's a, there's a couple pieces here and you actually, you almost like um, started, you were hinting at almost like the concept of, of what's called like governance tokens. If you if you're familiar with those, um, the answer to that is, is basically yes. Right. And, and that's actually not even powerful, uh, not even uh, um, some of those for like voting, for example, um, some of those you don't need an Oracle for, right. So um, to do like a vote on, Hey, does, you know, uh, 
I'm, I'm going to use like a like a governance token, for example. Um, hey, should we uh, add this new piece of data to my DeFi protocol? Right. You can just have, you know, that be like a, a yes or no and just run with that. But to do some of these interesting queries, these off chain queries, I mean, I mean, absolutely. Like there's the, it's this it's this super customizable framework where any type, anything you can imagine that can be done off chain can now be done on chain. Right. So if you're looking to get the sentiment of which one of my three dresses is best. Right. Yeah. And if you want to put it to a vote, like you can absolutely put it to a vote and, and maybe actually the Oracle just makes it easier for you to do that vote than absolutely because um, maybe you, you want to use the Oracle to to work with people who aren't in the crypto space. You can absolutely do that. That's that's something that Oracles can definitely help out with. That's something that Chainlink can definitely help out with. Um, but doing something, I, I'm almost I'm almost kind of hearing like you, you're hinting at like sentiment analysis. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something. Yeah, that's something that Oracles can do, too. Like. Um, there's a lot of models out there, like trading models, algorithm models that will will scrape like some news sources and figure out, okay, are these articles saying good or bad things about Apple? Mm -hmm. um, and again, to, to do these executions on smart contracts, to do these executions on these models too, you do still need to break down that qualitative data into, into some type of number, into something that these smart contracts, these algorithms can understand. Um, but yes, you can, I mean, it's, it's still, it's still the qualitative data though, right? So you scrape these articles and you say, okay, like this on a scale of zero to 10 of positivity, this article is like a six for mm -hmm. Apple hype. Right. And then you do that for a hundred articles. Now you have like a good estimate of what people are thinking about Apple or, or we'll use the dresses, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you have the, your smart contracts query off-chain data, and this is actually a, a really interesting thought, um, this is an interesting use case, start querying um, the real world to s almost like a reverse image search. Okay, where mm -hmm. has this dress been other places? And what are people saying about it, right? And uh -huh. then you could, um, and, and then you could have the smart contract Decide for it. you what to wear? <laughs> Decide for you what to wear, right? So, so you can do, I mean, you can do that off-chain, Doing it yeah. on chain, I, I would be I would be really inclined to know why you'd want a smart contract to decide right. what to wear, uh, yeah. but maybe you want a decentralized opinion on. I mean, th this is this is kind of like um, right. a, little, a little fiction to hear, but yeah. but it, it's it's kind of like a fun exercise. But um, yeah. yeah, you absolutely can have systems. Like I, that. So I, I would I, I already came up with a a, a better a, let's say problem that this might solve that the, the idea we're talking about right now. There is a big issue with fake news online. Uh, and people, historically, you know, people would gather news from the newspapers and newspapers had a, a code of ethics where they, they wouldn't publish anything unless they, 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 they had at least two verifiable sources and things of that nature. And today with social media, any, anyone could push out any source of information. So can you see that, that system yeah. we're describing with, with fake news where a smart contract uh, either labels, because right now what's happening, Trump tweets something and I don't, don't want to get political, but let's say a political figure tweets something um, and then Twitter has to decide, is this modified? Is this not? Is this fake news? Is not? But if we put it, take out the human factor and essentially we have a smart contract that will label something uh, real news or fake news based off this, uh, this consensus among the nodes. Yeah. Um, I, I'm actually glad that you brought up because yeah, that's actually a, a really, really powerful use case that, that smart contracts and combined with oracles can solve, right? Um, so you get a you get a de you can get a decentralized uh, history of the world, which is something that's like kind of unfathomable, right? Right now, for example, with Twitter, you know, if if somebody tweets something, Twitter decides if it's right or wrong. You have this centralized entity that you know their their PR team or their Twitter review team or or whoever their, whoever their team is says we want this on our platform or we don't want this on our platform. In a smart contract when it comes to Twitter or social medias or, or news, instead of having a single sole entity say, yes, this is news or no, this is news, you now have a decentralized aggregate and you can, you can code, you can infrastructurally say, okay, here's what is news and here's what isn't news. And now it's not somebody deciding, now it's this infrastructural um, decentralized choice of, okay, this is, this is correct or, or this isn't correct. And that's, insanely powerful because now we don't have to we can have like um almost what's what's called like there's this big term called trustlessness 
in smart mm -hmm. contracts. You have a, a trustless smart contract. It, and the reason it's trustless is not because it's, it's dishonest, not because you can't trust it, but because it's not trusting any single entity. You don't have to trust anybody. Um, to, you don't have to trust anybody to do the right thing because you, you get enough data points, you get enough decentrality, and you're going to have um, a, a good, a really solid idea of, of what is actually going on. So the news, for example, right? Um, and I'm, I'm actually really glad you brought around to this. That is a, that is a great point, Yona. Um, you have these decentralized oracles query, you know, as many news sources as they can, and then they'll report on chain what the news actually is from this decentralized aggregate. Mm -hmm. um, and what's so powerful is that it's, it's now this, it's not going to be this, hey, you know, the Times said this, or mm -hmm. CNN said this, or, uh, you know, Fox News said this. And you don't have to be like, oh man, I can't stand Fox News, they're so this, or I can't stand CNN, they're so this, because these are also centralized entities. Um, and instead of, uh, you no longer have to worry about that, like where, what's their political affiliation, what's their XYZ. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, that's actually an insanely powerful thought. Um, I would love it if we got there much faster. Um, so this is actually a call out and a challenge to anybody, any engineers watching right now. These are possible with these systems. Uh -huh. yeah. These events, um, these decentralized smart contracts that allow for these aggregates to come about are possible with smart contracts. They're possible with oracles. If you're sick of having these issues where you can't trust you know your news you can't uh, trust your social media become a blockchain engineer <laughs> encourage somebody else to become a blockchain engineer get involved um, because exactly what you're saying this is this is the type of future that that smart contracts enable and through oracles as well so that's actually a super powerful really really important um concept i'm, I'm really glad that you brought that up well, so then, so then for the for technology, what are your thoughts, um, you know, on these new, uh, in DeFi and these new Uniswap, you know, uh, copies with, with, with slight changes like SushiSwap, are, are you excited? I mean, obviously it starts off like these meme things, but are you excited about the actual uh, after effects where, where now people are realizing, whoa, I, I could take these powerful technologies that, and, and tweak them, add value to them and, and, and really uh, explode, you know, whether that will stay or not, but, but does this new, uh, this new kind of turning point, I would say, in DeFi excite you or, or scare you? Uh, I mean, both <laughs> in, in a really good way. I mean, mostly excite. I mean, when, whenever you do something new, uh, and, and you're normally, I, I, uh, I, I, I analogate or analogate, is that the right word? I compare it to like, you know, uh, you know, jumping, you know, uh, doing like, um, like I would, I would used to go like cliff jumping. I would jump off a cliff into like a pond of water, right? Mm -hmm. It's both a little terrifying when you're out there, right? <laughs> but it's also incredibly, incredibly exciting, right? You're, it's always, you're always gonna have this dichotomy of, of both of these. It's gonna be exciting and also terrifying. I, I mean, honestly, I'm mainly excited, right? And the fact that all these are popping up show how, how quickly projects can really get spun up and how quickly projects can, uh, can build something really cool. And I know we were talking about, you know, reimagining kind of the world of, of social media and news, but there's also these, these, these easier things to, to reimagine, you know, DeFi being one of the, um, excuse me, sorry about that. DeFi being one of the, the easier ones, right? Which, which is almost like, wait, what, why is DeFi one of the easier ones? Yeah. There's all these, these tweaks that you can do. And um, yeah, SushiSwap, um, Uniswap, the Uni token, there's, there's all these, these new things coming out. And, um, and this is almost like, like just kind of entrepreneurship in general, right? Your idea doesn't have to be, you know, we'll get people in, in our chat saying, oh, like I want to build this. Ah, somebody already made it, you know, already found mm -hmm. out. Well, well, guess what? There's, there's Google, there's Bing, there's a hundred search engines, you know, there's Amazon, there's a hundred different e-commerce stores. Mm -hmm. You know, your idea really only has to be 10% different if that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, to help push and, and that maybe that 10% is all it needed to be, mm -hmm. to go from, you know, good to extraordinary, you know, that's, that's how little it needs to be in order for it to make a huge impact, right? Sushi swap, for example, was maybe what it had a governance token. It was maybe 10% different and it saw a, a ton of volume go to it. Um, 
now Uniswap is, has come back with the Uni token, which has been yeah. <laughs> uh, fantastic. And, you know, a lot of the traffic kind of shifted back, but that's kind of going into like the drama a little bit. Um, but yeah, your, your idea only has to be, um, you know, really 10% different to, to build something really cool. And, you know, we're, we're moving so fast and engineers are moving so fast and projects are moving so fast. Ideas are moving so fast. We'll see a project be a hackathon project at one point and then literally like a year later they're a full-scale you know business mm -hmm. they have real money locked into them uh things are moving really quickly and it's it's really it's a really exciting time to jump in and and spin something up and make an impact and do something do something new mm -hmm. well patrick i usually like to end off our interviews with with, with asking uh the person i'm interviewing uh, you know what would they say to all the students out there who are interested in blockchain but i think your last answer uh, just answer that that perfectly. So, Patrick, I, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, and giving your your your, your incredible thoughts. I, I I got excited about some of the things we spoke about, and I'm sure our viewers will as well. So, I appreciate you taking the time. And and for all our viewers for Reimagine 2020, I'm Yona Hockhauser. Thanks for watching.